Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today I'm going to be showing you how to remove a harmonic balancer and then install a harmonic balancer. This is a really important repair and being able to do it yourself is going to save you hundreds of dollars in the long run of working on cars. Now, both of these tools that you require to take off the harmonic balancer and then put it back on, you can actually rent for free or a very small tool deposit down at like Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Pet Boys, something like that. Usually they have a tool rental system and you can uh, rent these tools for not a lot of money so that way you don't have to purchase them because honestly, you're probably going to do this once or twice unless you're like me and you like working with engines a lot and you don't really need to buy a tool that you're going to keep around, use once and probably never use again. So it's a good idea to rent one. Now I'm showing this uh, tutorial on an engine that is actually out of a vehicle. I do explain in the video how to do it if it was inside of a vehicle. Now if you're working on something like a transverse in lane four or V6, you're going to have to get creative. You might have to remove an engine. You might have to remove some suspension pieces in order to get to the front of your engine. So I'm not going to cover those. There's a bunch of bakes and models. Uh, you're going to have to be a little creative on that one. So I showed the video with a Gen 4 Chevrolet big block that I'm building for my 67 Camaro. Now, uh, if you're interested in that engine buildup, I'm actually doing an incomplete tutorial series here on YouTube where I break down basically every single bolt turn, every single specifications on how to build a Chevrolet big block. If you have an interest in that, you can go ahead and check that out down in the description. I left it on a big playlist. And you don't want to do this repair on an engine that's hot because the crank snout will be expanded. Uh, you want to do this on an engine that's as cool as you can basically get it. And then of course, when you're installing it, you want the engine as cool as possible possible while the harmonic balancer is as warm as possible. It's going to give you, you know, a couple thousandths of an inch difference and that really makes a difference when you're doing a pressed fit like you're going to have to do in this situation. But it's really not that bad. I'll show you exactly how all the tools and uh, associated equipment works and it is definitely something you can tackle at home. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is remove this three quarter inch bolt here. And we're going to set this aside along with both of these washers. This is a harmonic balancer or harmonic dampener puller. So it does come with these interchangeable tips. So make sure you've got the correct one on. So this is the one we're going to be using today. It's a little bit more pointier so it can go into the hole that is located at the end of the crank. If you don't have the correct one of these, you're going to damage the end of the crank, which will make reinstalling it mm, very difficult. So. With this, you want to make sure that all the threads are greased as well because there's going to be a lot of pressure going through there. I don't know if you can see that quite on camera, but I have greased the threads very, very well um, because why fight yourself? If you put grease on it, it's going to make it easier for you. The next thing we're going to go over are these bolts here. These are some bolts I have laying around the shop, but the washers are really important. You want to make sure those are really robust, thick washers that when you put it through here, it's not just going to pull the bolt head through this gap. So with that out of the way, we can go ahead and install it. So now we can install our harmonic balancer puller here. And when you're installing the brace bolts, we'll call them, you want to make sure that they're installed as deep as they'll go. I'm just going to do them finger tight for now and uh, get my ratchet in a second. Got my third one here. As I'm tightening them, I want to make sure that this is in the middle. So, and you want to make sure that you're doing it, uh, you know, evenly just in case your bolts aren't long enough. See, these are a bit longer, so I'm just gonna spin this until it's tight, but uh, I'm gonna make sure that these are, these three outer bolts are as tight as they're gonna go. So mine uh, happen to be 9 16ths. I'm working on an American engine. If you have like a Japanese or European, it's uh, gonna be metric, but the process is exactly the same. So do not fret there. And obviously I have this on an engine stand, so it's a lot easier and uh, better viewing experience for you guys. But if you had to do this on a car, it's not impossible. Um, just keep that in mind as well. And make sure that these are fully seated because if you only have a couple threads on these bad boys and then uh, you start putting a bunch of pressure, you'll just rip the threads right out and uh, good luck with that. So we're gonna make sure this is nice and snug like that. See, they've already bought them out of their threads and this is loose. See what I mean? There we go, those are tight. And then we can wind this in like that. So I've changed angles here. We can see that the balance, the puller is tilted up a little bit. So what we need to do is loosen this right here 
because this needs to be, this surface needs to be parallel to the harmonic balancer. So we went a little overzealous on that one. That was one too, because um, it's not going in completely evenly. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Actually, I think it could go in a little more. There we go. You can fine tune adjust it like this. You just wanna make sure that this surface is parallel to the harmonic balancer. And then look down inside of there too. So the hole on the crankshaft should be like this and that point from the puller should be fully seated into there like this. If it's off or crooked or not completely square on it, it's not gonna do its job. So we're good here. I'm gonna be using my half inch impact gun with loaded with a 916 socket. Uh, if you don't have uh, an, an impact gun, a half inch gun, uh, you can try holding the back of the crankshaft. So you can put some bolts at the back of the crankshaft and uh, use a big pry bar and hold on to that if you don't have an air gun. But we do have an air gun, so we're gonna use it. And you're gonna be tightening it because you're pulling this off. Now we can go ahead and remove our bolts here, um, the puller from the harmonic balancer. There we go, we can set that aside. And here is our beautiful harmonic balancer. Now that it's off, we're gonna go get our, on our end, we're gonna get our engine rebuilt. Your end might differ, your plans, whatever you're doing, but the next thing you're gonna see is us putting this back on. All right, so what we have in front of you here is a harmonic balancer installer. You can rent these at like Advanced Auto Parts or AutoZone for a very small amount of money. And they come with a bunch of different attachments here that apply to different ends of crankshafts and we need to find the one that we're gonna be using today. So for today, we can match our uh, bolt here that holds on our harmonic balancer to this thread right here. We can also put it on the end of the crankshaft just to make sure, and we're using 7 16 uh, by 20. Uh, so if you have a big block Chevy, that's the one you're gonna be using. Um, but this also applies to a bunch of other vehicles. So if you don't have a big block Chevy, just match the one that fits at the end of your uh, crankshaft. All right, with our collect correct uh, tool selected here, we can go ahead and assemble it. So we can put the thin shaft into the thick shaft like this. This screws on to the thin shaft. Like that. Then this big nut goes on the outside of the studs here, or outside of the threads, like this. And then this bearing is really important. You want to make sure that the inner race is facing towards your nut like this so it has a surface to rotate on. So now we can go to our harmonic balancer. So it's a good idea to put a little bit of uh, grease here on these threads and on the bearing just to help everything uh, go on much smoother. There we go. And now we're ready to go to our harmonic balancer. We got our harmonic balancer here. Uh, it's heated up to about 170 degrees. It's pretty toasty. You could just leave it outside on a hot day in direct sunlight, but we used a toaster oven to get it up so the metals expanded just a little bit for us. So the next thing we're gonna do is get some grease and apply it right here on this surface. And that's so that way uh, the front seal of the engine doesn't start up dry. There we go, now it's ready for installation. So the engine is uh, upside down. I believe when we took it off, it was right side up. Uh, it's exactly the same. You just wanna pay attention to the location of the Woodruff key, which is at the end of my pinky finger here. And you wanna line that up with the Woodruff uh, index on the harmonic balancer. And all we're gonna do is slide this on, and I have an oven mitt, because it's very, very warm. Line that up on the Woodruff key. There we go, and now we can grab our tool and put that in place. So you can line that up into the end of our crankshaft. Spin that in place. And we wanna make sure our tool is fully seated in the crankshaft so there's maximum threads. This is a lot of pressure, this is a pressed fit. So we can see that this nut isn't bound at all. 
So we know that this tool is seated fully in the snout of the crank. All right, so in my right hand, I have an inch and one quarter wrench that's gonna go on the nut here. Um, so we can see that it fits on there good, but we're gonna back that up all the way onto that bearing. And like I said earlier, it's really important that you have the spinning surface on the bearing facing you so that way the nut has something to spin on because otherwise it's just going to dig into the harmonic balancer and it's not going to go anywhere or it'll ruin everything <laughs> basically so we're going to put our big wrench on here grab our little wrench or 9 16 to hold this in place and we're basically just going to walk this large nut on and it's going to take a little while and it's going to be a little tedious but it will get there and you'll know you're in place because it'll stop moving. And some people are crazy enough to try this with the bolt that actually um, holds the harmonic balance around to the crankshaft. I do not recommend that. It can lead to breakage, which would be no fun. And you can rent these for very, very cheap or free in some places. They just have a tool deposit. And this is why we greased this up earlier because it is a lot of force here. <clears throat> and you want all the help you can get. And there we go, nice and tight, it's on. All right, so it's pretty much stopped turning. I mean, if you're really hulking it, you can turn more, but uh, you know, don't overdo it. Just until it stops moving, and then we can back the tool out. Sometimes the tool gets stuck in the end of the crank. A pair of channel locks solves that problem immediately. There we go. So I've got my securing bolt here and I wanna thread this in by hand. Don't just wing it on the gun immediately if you have uh, air tools like I do. Now I have my half inch impact gun here and I'm gonna tighten that up. Until it stops, and now we can grab our Torx back. All right, uh, this process is gonna take two people. Uh, you're gonna have to have somebody holding the back of the engine, and if the engine's in the car, you're gonna have to get a little creative with like a flex plate or a flywheel holding mechanism. They also make something that holds onto the end of the harmonic balancer while you're tightening it, but if the engine's out of the car like this, you can just have somebody hold the end of the crank for you. And our Torx back today is 85 foot-pounds. And the impact gun is <laughs> more than enough to get the 85 foot pounds, so we're good. So that's how to remove and then replace a harmonic balancer for any engine. They all work pretty much exactly the same. Remove the nut, use the tool, put the, use another tool to put it back on, put the nut back on, and your torque spec might be different than mine because mine's for a big block Chevy, and the sizing might be a little bit different because they differ for in different engine sizes, and mine's pretty much the biggest gasoline engine you're gonna really run across, so all your stuff is probably gonna be uh, quite a bit scaled down. If you like me, like what I do, uh, consider clicking the join button down below, supporting this channel. It would mean an absolute ton to me, and there's a lot of cool perks along with it. Thank you so very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time.